Hi everyone, welcome back. I am back with another video as part of my tips and tricks series. And yeah, I know it has been a while since I did one of these videos, but uh, here you go. I'm back with one of these and uh, for my regular viewers, you know exactly what these are. These are little snippets of uh, or short videos where we talk about a specific thing that some of you may find useful. If you want to be notified of these videos and others in future, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button. And while you're there, please find the thanks button if you're feeling extra generous. Okay, coming back to the topic. This is about interpolation for resizing your 3D volumetric data. What do I mean by that? When you're working on, for example, a FIBSEM or volumetric EM or some of the other techniques where you have higher resolution in X and Y, but you have uh, lower resolution in Z, meaning you're taking your image, let's say slicing your sample, taking image, slicing your sample, oftentimes you end up with three, four, five nanometers in X and Y, you know, pixel size, but in terms of Z, you cannot slice your samples thin enough for you to get three, four, five nanometers, right? So you may end up with 10 nanometers in Z or 40 nanometers in Z, whatever that is. So your volume is not kind of isotropic, right? So you have uh, X pixels, X and Y in pixel size, you have three nanometers. In voxel size, you have some other nanometers. In this example that you see on the screen, you see 10 nanometer pixel, but then the voxel itself is 10 by 10 by 40. But your downstream analysis may require you to change this volume to isotropic volume so the voxel size has equal dimensions in all x, y, and z. If this is what you're looking for, this video is for you. We're going to take this 10 by 10 by 40 and then interpolate this by adding more slices inside. What do we mean by adding more slices? Obviously, we are taking intensities from one slice and intensities from the other and try to interpolate based on the distance between these two. So that's basically it. And if you want to have a visual uh, look at this, on the left-hand side, it's a larger voxel size, which means you have fewer slices. So when you put them together, it's it's a bit thinner compared to the right hand side. In the right hand on the right hand side, I took that 40 and added like a slice every, uh, you know, between alternate slices. So your voxel size is now 10 by 10 by 20. You mean you have more slices? So instead of 50 in Z, you probably have 98 or 100 in uh, Z after you resample it. So that's basically the exercise. And here is again a screenshot of exactly the same data set on the left hand side. You see the raw data on the right hand side. You see the data set after it has been resampled uh, from 10 by 10 by 40 to 10 by 10 by 20 nanometers. It's exactly identical. Okay, so if this is the goal, let's go ahead and jump into our Colab notebook so we can walk through the code. And again, I promise this is going to be a short video. And uh, if you are looking for code, please look for the link in the description down below. Okay, let's jump in. And uh, we are going to use regular grid interpolator from SciPy. I'm pretty sure most of you already have SciPy if you're working in Python. Uh, if not, it's pretty straightforward to install these libraries. Go ahead and search Google search for it. And here is the here is the link to if you want to learn more about how this actually works. But I'll explain that at a high level right now. Uh, basically, it takes a 3D grid of values with certain intervals, and you adjust the grid dimensions and you fill it using the interpolation. So that's that's what the plan is for now. And uh, again, we already talked about it. So let's go ahead and come down here. This is the meat of it, right? This is what's driving our uh, interpolation between the data points. And let's go ahead and import it. In addition to importing scikit image IO, of course, to read the image. And if you want to convert the image into 8-bit, you can import this. And matplotlib, if you want to visualize, numpy, of course. And tip file, I'm going to use imwrite. I should delete imsave is, I guess, an old way. imwrite, uh, in case you want to save, uh, write the output file as a TIFF format with embedded metadata. So you, all the pixel sizes and everything is kind of embedded into your TIFF file, then this is a pretty good library. So let's go ahead and run it. And our input image is the one that we just looked at. And that's the input image. And just go ahead and print the shape. So we have 50 along the Z dimensions and 800 by 800 is our X and Y. So first thing first, let's define our old pixel 
size and old slice thickness so old pixel size is 10 and old uh, slice thickness is 40 we know that and our new pixel size that we want to resize into let's leave xy to 10 you can change that too you can change that to uh, 20 30 you can interpolate you can also extrapolate if you want but let's stick with interpolate for now and the slice thickness that the new slice thickness that we want is 20 if you want an isotropic volume go ahead and do 10 but again google uh, colab may crash on you because that actually is trying to store too much in the ram and it may crash if you have higher or paid google colab or if you are doing this on your own system uh, you'll probably have better luck Okay, let's go ahead and run this and this is our new setting so the output volume that we are gonna look at is going to be a tiff file with twice the number of uh, slices so basically we are starting with 50 slices here so we will end up with 98 final slices why 98 and why not 100 because you take the top and bottom away and you're inserting new slices in between right so you have about uh, 48 because we're creating 48 new ones okay now first step is to create an array of your old so you know that okay what is the spacing I mean in fact when we run this and if you look at print the old right here this is nothing but 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 because our pixel spacing is 10 nanometers so we are just creating this grid of 0 10 20 30 40 and how many of these do we actually have we should have 800 of these because our pixel size is 800 by 800 by 50 if you don't believe me let's uh, in fact even if you uh, this is always a good idea so let's go ahead and see what is the length of x underscore old it should be 800 i hope and there you go yeah so you probably know what's going to happen when you print the z old we have 50 of these and the spacing in this case is 40 nanometers now we need to define a new grid pretty soon where the spacing is not this but the spacing is 0 20 40 60 80 and so on so we'll do that in a second and once you interpolate these how do you want to replace those pixel values like you're creating new slices which means at the same pixel you have before and after and you want to insert something which means you have to take these two pixel values and do some sort of a math to get uh, the pixel values of the intermediate slices that you're creating and how can you do that I mean there are many ways my favorite is cubic uh, but uh, again that requires a lot of memory so if you have it go ahead and uh, do that but on a volume like this uh, for now let's stick with linear linear is as simple as just you take the before uh, you take the minus slice and the plus slice on both sides average them and you get a value whatever the value is you place that in the middle you may get slightly blurred images with linear that's why i recommend trying by cubic and a whole uh, and and uh, some of these to see which one works for your data but that's pretty much it okay now create a regular grid interpolator object now how do we do that using the old coordinates and the input data so you have your old coordinates and you have your old pixel values so go ahead and create this object so the object knows that okay this is the space i'm working with and when i insert new data whether it is, is z slices whether it is in x or y whatever it is however you're doing that it has values to interpolate with right in this case using linear algorithm okay so that's the object we are defining here regular grid interpolator so we have our z old x old and y old uh, coordinates and our input image provides the necessary values which is the pixel values in our case and method equals to method which is linear in our case and uh, let's go ahead and run this and this creates that object and method is not defined because I did not run this line and now let's go ahead and do this and okay we are all set now we need to create the new sizes so the new size is going to be using our new pixel sizes and let's go ahead and create this this is again basically nothing x new is same as x old y new is same as x old because we are using the same 10 nanometer pixel all it's changing is the z new where it is actually taking the new slice thickness and adding those coordinates right there uh, you can go ahead and print i think uh, that's what i'm doing right there so you saw exactly the same previously instead of 0 40 80 now we have 0 20 40 that's the only difference okay now is uh, now let's generate a new grid of points using this np.indices so we are actually creating these new points and they represent the coordinates of the new image grid 
and then we interpolate and then we reshape it okay again if you if you're curious about what's happening at every step obviously insert print statements and see exactly what's uh, what's going on now look at the points dot shape right now so you see this I bet is nothing but 800 multiplied by 800 multiplied by how many ever slices that we are going to end up with. I mean, how many ever numbers we have right there. That should be 98 of these and uh, times 98. In fact, let's confirm the values right there. All I'm doing is I'm dividing this by 800 by 800 and you see we got 98. So just consistency check, right? So we know that our output image should have uh, 98 uh, slices. Th that's it. We are all set. Now we need are uh, ready to perform interpolation. So we created our interpolation object up here. So let's go ahead and use that interpolation object and apply that onto the points that we have right here and then reshape this into our new shape which would be 98 by 800 by 1800. And this step will take uh, some time depending on your resources, depending on how many points you're trying to create. But in my case, I would expect about 30 seconds or so. So let's go ahead and pause this until this is done. Okay, so as you can see, it took about 27 seconds right now. And let's go ahead and look at the shape. It should be 98 by 800 by 800. That's it, we're all done. Now, if you want to save this as an image that you want to work with uh, on other platforms, you know, you need to convert that into either 8-bit or 16-bit. In this case, I'm converting this into 16-bit image because the input image was 16-bit to begin with. So I just want to compare apples to apples. So 16-bit, how am I doing that? Well, my interpolated data minus whatever the minimum pixel value is divided by the maximum multiplied by 65535. Obviously, you know what that means. I'm just normalizing it to the minimum and maximum values and converting that to 16 bit. 2 to the power of 16 is 65536. And values start with from zero. So that's the value I'm multiplying with. And I'm going to save this array as uh, unsigned integer 16. So that's what this is. Now, this can be saved using TIFF file, using scikit image, using OpenCV, whatever you want to. But in my case, I like to use the TIFF file library, the imwrite that we imported, because now I can embed uh, the metadata into that. And again, here is the link to Fiji or ImageJ if you wanna open this image in ImageJ. And my metadata, I'm giving a spacing, slice thickness, uh, and, and so on. I mean, the axis are z, uh, ZYX and uh, imwrite with that specific file name, interpolated data, blah, 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 go ahead and run this. And that's it, the image got saved and it got saved right there, interpolated image. I can go ahead and download it and open it and let's compare both images. Okay, so there you go. On the left-hand side, what you see is our original image uh, with uh, 50 slices. On the right-hand side, you have the modified one or the one where we interpolated and it's got 98 slices right there. And the pixel size should be the same, eight by eight microns and 8,000 nanometers by, well, eight by eight microns right there. Well, in terms of the field of view and uh, the pixel size wise, if I go here, let's go ahead and look at uh, the properties. This is our original where you have 10 by 10 by 40 nanometers. And if we look at the one on the right hand side, it should be uh, properties. 10 by 10 by 20 nanometers right here. Now let's go ahead and look at, okay, this is the first image. This is the first image. They look same, they look identical. But if I go to the third one here and go to the second one here, they should be exactly the same, right? They are identical. But the one that we filled this in with is the second one right here, there. And you see how this is slightly blurred? You see, let me go back and forth. There is the original, this is the filled one. It doesn't look exactly same as the first one or the third one for a reason because we have used linear interpolation. I definitely recommend trying other forms of interpolation. Bicubic is my uh, most favorite <laughs> approach. So go ahead and try that one. But now you got an idea of how you can convert uh, or interpolate your 3D volume or it doesn't matter how many other dimensions you, this algorithm basically fills in the values between two different values using whatever the method that you choose. We chose in this case linear method. Okay guys, I hope you found this short tutorial to be useful, insightful, and if you want to 
hear more about these type of uh, tips and tricks again please leave a comment and of course do not forget to like these videos and of course do not forget to subscribe to this channel thank you